you ever never seen Neil's fuck before? Hi, I'm Jackie. Um, trans girl, pretty new to YouTube, but I recently was reading a book called The Book of Eels, and oh my god, we do not talk about these fuckers enough. They are fucking weird. I'm sure you're thinking, Jackie, what do you mean that we've never seen Neil's fuck, right? I just met you, and you don't know if I've seen Neil's fuck. You don't know if I'm a prude. I mean that nobody in all of human history has ever seen two eels having sex. I don't know about you, but I think it's fucking crazy. I mean, like, I'm a trans physicist, right? I've seen quantum mechanics. I've seen electrodynamics, thermodynamics. I don't know, fucking getting misgendered at a little card in the corner. Humans have done a lot of shit. And you're telling me 7 billion people, plus all the fucking dead people, not one of them has ever seen two eels having sex. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. And today I'd like to tell you a little more about what I learned about eels from the Book of Eels. So the story begins around 400 BC with Aristotle, truly the grandfather of effects and logic. So Aristotle is one of the first people to take crack at this where do eels come from problem, right? And he thinks about it and he eventually comes up with this notion of spontaneous generation. And he would probably explain it like this. So you got a river, right? You got mud on the bottom of the river. And uh, yeah, the eels come from the mud. Oh yeah, um, the, the mud turns into the eels. It's a procedure I like to call something from nothing. And it is very scientific and I have done a lot of work on it. So I don't need to tell you that that's bullshit, right? But I also don't need to tell you that Aristotle was no bitch. He was a smart guy. And this wasn't like just a fucking offhand opinion. He worked hard on this shit and he believed it so intensely that he would essentially say, eels come from nothing. And if you don't believe me, you haven't looked at eels hard enough. Cause I look at those fuckers inside now and I didn't see no eggs, nothing. And lo and behold, people searched for the eel testicles for hundreds, thousands of years actually and they were not found. Which brings us to our next protagonist. Here's 1876, swipe over to a young Sigmund fucking Freud in grad school, living in Trieste, trying to do his dissertation, get his doctor or whatever. Believe me, been there, it's fucking hard. And he's tasked with the simple matter of finding the eel testicles. Okay, I got a knife, got a box of eels, let's go to town, right? Days, weeks, he searches for these fucking eel testicles. And like his ancestors, those that came before him, like the fucking Avatar The Last Airbender line, he too cannot find the eel dick. And it is driving him insane. So he's living in Trieste, surrounded by beautiful women, feeling inadequate, because he can't find the fucking eel dick. Coming up with these crazy theories about why women aren't good enough for him and all this kind of shit. Basically like the proto-incel. And he gets so many charged emotions. He gets so stressed out and so emasculated by his inability to sexualize the eel that he develops all of the sexual Freudism, fucking penis envy, all the complexes and shit, all that you could say is, in a way, a descendant of the eels bullshittery. And the rest was history. But yeah, it took him like 400 eels before he found it, and even then the results were pretty contested. So what do we know today, right? Well, it turns out that eels only grow their testicles very shortly before they're about to mate. And by that time, they're on the way to the Sargasso Sea, which is somewhere in the middle of the Bermuda Triangle, I shit you not where they proceed to fuck and die in that order. Man, I don't think I could fuck with a grad student harder if I tried, dude. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, ooh, this trans girl I don't know just got caught in 4K because you just told me that they're fucking in the Bermuda Triangle. You wouldn't know that unless you saw them fucking, right? I gotcha. Well, that's actually very interesting. It brings us to a man named Johannes Schmidt, who did a very comprehensive survey of the Atlantic Ocean in the 1900s. Essentially, he took a bunch of big-ass nets and he attached them to the backs of fishing boats and the great Atlantic liners at the time, you know, like Titanic. Precinct. And there would be someone on board who knew eels, and he would look at the eels and be like, oh yeah, this, this is a fucker, it's this big, it's this kind of eel, and then he would report back. And it's a really comprehensive survey that actually included all the different species of Atlantic eel. You got the glass eel, you got the silver eel, you got the yellow eel. What if I told you, fuck you, those are all actually the same eel? Yeah, it turns out that the glass eel is the baby, and then it grows into the yellow eel, and then it becomes a silver eel, which lo and behold makes its beeline for fucking the Sargasso Sea. These eels were so diverse and so far spread across the Atlantic Ocean, people didn't even realize they were the same fucking eel. And so Schmidt com collects all the data and he compiles it into a map and he goes, oh hey, here's the region where there are glass eels, here's the region where there are yellow eels, here's the region where there are silver eels, and lo and behold, glass eels kind of blend into the yellow eels, yellow eels blend into the silver eels, and lo and fucking behold, at the center of it all is the Bermuda Triangle. Oh my god. <laughs> How's that for conspiracy theory? That survey is actually the only main evidence that we really have that the eels are fucking in the Bermuda Triangle, but we're pretty certain that they do at this point. Anyway, I'm Jackie. Thanks for listening to me ramble about eels a lot, and I'll see you next time.